I don't know why I got moved from the very end of the line, like the last person or the second well, last to here. To get so some disagreements in the okay, I guess of, I know. guess I'm a disagreement guy, I but, I would, like, but I would, but I would, I just want to make sh sure at the onset that I let you know that probably like 90 percent of what you say totally I'd agree with. So I, I would align on conservative you values. Sure everyone that might have a difference of opinion is allowed a platform. Fair enough. Sounds good. Well, thanks. Uh, we came, my wife and I. I've got two kids. Uh, it's a blessing indeed. Came an hour and a half, and uh, I also appreciate the fact that. You are outspoken about your Christian faith. I mean, you made very clear here that your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is who you live your life for. So I have a question along those lines. Um, I've heard you say a few times, and I just caught this in a few videos, and I don't know, I don't date all your videos. So um, you'd mentioned this statement. You cannot be a true born-again Christian and vote Democrat. Do you still stand by that statement? Yes. Okay. Are you familiar with the notable conservative evangelical Christian John Piper? Oh, yeah. Are you, familiar <laughs> so, yeah. Are you familiar with his uh, article he came out with November 2020, right before the election, on yeah, it was policies, persons, and paths around? Effectively, can't vote for Trump, can't vote for Biden. It was like a, a middle ground, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, yeah, in a, in a I, sense. I, his deal's Irresistible Grace. That's his blog or something, right? Um, Des Desiring God is his well-known okay, blog and channel. Yeah, yeah, you're good. No problem. No, he's a very well-respected theologian. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. So I, I was just going to maybe mention a quick little blurb of what he said and then maybe ask how you would kind of respond to that, if that's okay. And so in the article, um, he said, okay. so we think that um, policies that endorse baby killing, sex switching, and freedom limiting, and socialistic overreach are viewed as deadly, and they are, indeed. I completely agree 100%. All those things are completely evil. He said, however, um, I remain baffled that so many Christians – which, of course, many in this room are, consider the sins of unrepentant sexual immorality. Of course, we're talking about a specific someone here. Unrepentant boastfulness, unrepentant vulgarity, unrepentant factiousness, and the like to not only be toxic to our nation. And so he ends by saying this. In fact, I think it is a drastic mistake to think that the deadly influences of a leader come not only through his policies, but also through his, and not only, excuse me, the deadly influences of a leader come only through his policies and not also through his person. Okay. Yes. And so, so all of us are going to be faced with a decision here in seven months or so when we go to the polls in November. And so my question for you is, you know, as, as, as I'm talking specifically for those who claim to be born again, sincere, authentic Christians, and I'm asking you, how can you illegitimize the faith of a sincere, Bible-believing, prayerful, submitted-to-the-word-of-God Christian who simply determines that a man who engages in blatant and unrepentant sin should not lead our country. So How can you illeg well, illegitimize that? Did answer? John Piper say he was voting for Joe Biden, though? He said that this article is the closest thing that you can get to to determine what I'm voting. He didn't say specifically okay, who he was Okay, so that's vote different. For. So my yeah. statement was the following. You cannot say you believe in biblical principles and vote for the principles of the Democrat Party. They're incongruent. They do not fit. And that's not what – I'll, I'll address I John Piper. I agree with you. No, I know you agree. So I, I'm going to address the John Piper thing because I disagree with what he said. But my position is this. If you're a born-again Christian, by the fruit you will know them. And if the fruit is that I will cast my ballot for a party that had Gretchen Whitmer and Gavin Newsom and Eric Adams and Joe Biden spend more wording and video time on Easter Sunday talking about trans rights – than the resurrection of our Lord and Savior that supports the massacring of children by a trans and also abortion, that you cannot be a Christian and vote for that. Now, John Piper did not say he was voting Democrat. Yes. So I, he doesn't even fall into what I'm, I'm talking about. So let's talk about John Piper. What John Piper is saying is that I believe abortion is wrong. Okay. I believe that the transing of kids is wrong. I believe all this sort of stuff. But I think Donald Trump is this unrepentant sinner. And I would say, John, Mr. Piper, what do you have to do with the story of Samson? Should he be in the hall of faith in Hebrews? According to our own scriptures, it says that Samson is in the righteous hall of faith. If you know the story about Samson, he's sort of similar to Trump, the hair. God came to Samson while he was in the bed with a prostitute. Samson took the jaw of a donkey and killed 400 Philistines. He wasn't exactly your perfect mold, but God used him for a purpose. And I would ask John Piper, can God use broken, sinful vessels for his purpose? He used King Cyrus to bring God's chosen people after the first exile for the reconstruction of the second temple. 
And the question for John Piper, he says, I remain baffled. Well, you shouldn't remain baffled, Mr. Piper, because the people that are Trump supporters that are Christians, they know Donald Trump's faults. They could recite them back to you, just like they know their own faults. But he also has virtues. And I never hear the virtues ever articulated from people like John Piper. What are the virtues? He's awfully courageous. Would you keep on fighting if you're facing 700 years in federal prison time and your family's business empire is at risk of being taken from you? Would you keep on running for office and keep on fighting if everything you've done is in front of you? I don't know if I would. Secondly, his love of country, I think, is unparalleled, unprecedented. Finally, he was conflating a policy agenda with personality. He says a president is not only personality or policy, but it's also personality. But policy is far more important than personality. I'll prove it to you. If you turn off your TV and you tune out of all the media, will you still be impacted by the president? Yes, by his policy. And so the question for John Piper is, you're watching way too much mainstream media. You're being infected way too much about a man that I don't think you even know. But can you acknowledge that Donald Trump delivered three Supreme Court justices and gave us the overturn of Roe versus Wade? If we voted the way that John Piper wanted, us, or let's just say embrace that belief system in 2016, we would have had Jez I mean, uh, Hillary Clinton um, as president, and we never would have repealed Roe versus Wade. The embassy would not have been moved to Jerusalem. We wouldn't have had peace in the Middle East. I could go on. I think we proved that the tr first Trump presidency, flawed man, excellent policy, fulfilling his promises. I don't think any Trump supporter you know, is, is necessarily in disagreement with what I would have said. I'm baffled by John Piper, an alleged humble, fervent, dedicated Bible teacher that can be indifferent to a million abortions a year, 100,000 kids on hormone blockers, a wide open border, the destruction of Western society, race hatred, defunding the police, rising crime, the downfall of Minneapolis' hometown, and him preaching about Donald Trump's personality. It's on you, John Piper, to explain yourself, not us. Go ahead, really quick. Yeah, you're good. Again, John Piper would obviously stand against those things categorically. But he's not voting. Categorically and unequivocally. But if you don't and, vote and, and against John, it. And John Piper wouldn't be the only one who would take this sort of stance. I mean, if you're going to oppose John Piper as a notable conservative. Well, I can listen. Evangelical... Andy Stanley, Russell Moore, John Piper, Rick Warren, Timothy Keller has now passed away. If they're... David Platt, we could continue to Yeah, go but on why on. won't so, they so, vote so... to end abortion? Period. End of story. If you will not vote to end abortion, stop telling me you're a Christian all the time. Start acting and voting like you are a Christian. I think they're just saying that we, we, we can't have unconditional support of an individual Hold simply on. because it's... of his party. We have film. unconditional support the... of biblical principles that a flawed vessel fought for and achieved. So Russell Moore, David French, all these guys that go around and talk about how terrible the Christian right is, how can they reconcile? Because they're going to have to go in front of a supreme ruler of the world, Jesus Christ, and says, why were you preaching in the New York Times and writing these long, meandering op-eds about how you didn't like Donald Trump's tone when you were given a binary choice, baby saved, babies murdered? And they're like, well, uh, I don't like his tone. What kind of a Christian is that? He didn't, he didn't mention tone. He mentioned unrepentant sin of five different categories, all of which are mentioned explicitly in the New Testament. Okay. If I was an Israelite in the time of the Old Testament, I would not have advocated for Samson as leader. He was not a commendable leader. I would not no, sit here and Why campaign. is he in the Hall of Faith? I would, I would God not, thought he was a great leader. Thank goodness here. you're not the not judge of men. I would not sit here and com campaign for Samson to be judged. God yeah, put you know, you know what I mean? Samson in Hebrews. You, know I mean? you did you know it. I mean? So did you put Jephthah too, and Jephthah was a child sacrifice. Yes, I mean, so maybe on, we can so learn from the flawed vessels of the Old Testament not try to apply the perfect interpretation of the law. You're making my point. So th it's not even a choice is what I'm getting at. If you believe in the biblical principles, if you believe in what the Bible says to love life, to love the unborn, to care about those that can't defend themselves, it's a binary choice. And it's not, it's not about the defending the unrepentant alleged behavior of an individual. It's did that individual advance the priorities that we care about. And the answer resoundingly was yes. Yes, and I would agree yes with you. so you should vote Trump. That's not the end. Do we really think that's the end, though? I mean, to, to think, I think it's a biblical principle, Charlie, and hopefully you would agree that it's not only policies that a leader advocates for that impact the nation. You're right. It's, it's also Supreme Court the, justices. The, yes, and it's the character of an individual. Okay, well, hold I on. I go through Scripture. Have you ever met Donald Trump? To advocate this. No, I have not. Okay, personally. so, but hold on. I think this is super important because... 
absent meeting an individual, you don't know who he truly is. But let's say he's all those terrible things. I'm a sinner. Trump's a sinner. Trump has done more to fight for the priorities that I care about. And I believe that every Christian should pray deeply and act to defend the unborn this November. Thank you so much. We'll get to the next question. Thank you. We got a simple question with it. Do you think Jesus of Nazareth, first century, who you and I both follow, do you think he would agree with your statement that no born-again Christian would be I think Jesus of Nazareth would have handled Trump like he did in John 8. He would have said, do not cast a stone, stone against Donald Trump. He would have said, Trump. Sin no more. You know what he would have said to Charlie Kirk? He would have said, don't throw a stone at Charlie Kirk. Charlie, sin no more. Because we all fall short of the glory of God. And God uses all of us as broken vessels for his purposes. All of us. Thank you.